Hey guys, it's Margot at Lanterna here. I'm a maths tutor for Lanterna and I'm really excited to be bringing you a number of maths videos discussing topics in the analysis and approach a syllabus. So we're going to be picking out some topics which a lot of the time students are found to be um, the bit slightly more tricky ones. And first of all, we're going to be looking at binomial theorem. So binomial theorem is in section 1.9 of the syllabus on the number and algebra, and it's relevant for both standard and higher level. And what binomial theorem discusses is what are the terms in the expansion of A plus B. So without further ado, let's have a look. First of all, then, we're going to talk about Pascal's triangle, which you can see right here. Now, I'm sure a lot of you watching this video recognize Pascal's triangle, but let's just remind ourselves, first of all, what do the numbers in Pascal's triangle actually represent, or what do they show us? Well, we can obtain each number in Pascal's triangle by adding the two terms above it in the triangle. So, for example, if we take two and one, if we add those two together, we'll get three, which is the number directly below in the triangle. Further, for example, if we add one and four together, we get the number directly below it, which is five, etc., etc. But why is Pascal's triangle useful to us when discussing binomial theorem? Well, the reason for that is that the nth row of Pascal's triangle gives the coefficients of the terms in the expansion a plus b to the power of n. So let's just look at an example and what we mean by this. Well, take something relatively familiar, such as a plus b to the power of 3. Now, we could work this out by using cross multiplication relatively easily. Let's just use this example to really look at how Pascal's triangle works. So first of all, we need to remember that whenever we're doing an expansion, we need to talk in increasing powers of A and decreasing powers of B or vice versa. It doesn't matter. So our terms are going to be A cubed B to the power of zero. Then we're talking in decreasing powers of A, increasing powers of B. We'll have as our second term A squared b to the power of 1 plus a to the power of 1 b to the power of 2 plus our last term will be a to the power of 0 b to the power of 3 and what pascal's triangle does is it tells us what the coefficients of all these terms are going to be so we're interested in a plus b to the power of 3 which means n is 3 so we're looking at the third row of pascal's triangle so the numbers here are going to tell us the coefficients of our terms so if we pick out these coefficients we'll see that the coefficient of our zeroth term in the binomial theorem would always start counting from zero is one. So therefore, the coefficient of our zeroth term is one. The coefficient of the next term we see in Pascal's triangle is three. The coefficient of the next term is also three. And the coefficient of the final term is again one. So if we write this out a little bit more neatly, we get our final result to be a cubed plus three a squared b plus three a b squared plus b cubed. Okay, now that works quite well for relatively small values of n when it's not much of a problem to write out that number of rows of the Pascal's triangle. But what if we start to get n, which is you know bigger than six, for example, then we're gonna be having to write out seven rows of the Pascal's triangle, which isn't really ideal considering it's not very time um, efficient in our exam and we might make some mistakes. So ideally we want something to tell us what actually are the terms in Pascal's triangle without having to write out all the rows. And there is a solution to this and this is as follows. So the kth term in the nth row of Pascal's triangle is given by this formula, n choose k, which we know is equal to n factorial over k factorial n minus k factorial. So let's just have a look how this works. Say we were trying to extract um, the first term of the fifth row. So remember, because we start counting from zero, our first term is going to be this one right here. So the first term of the fifth row. So the number we're looking for is five, but let's just use this formula to show us that this formula actually works in trying to extract the numbers in Pascal's triangle. So we want to find the first term of the fifth row. So our n is going to be five, our k is going to be equal to one. 
plugging this into the formula right there, we get five factorial divided by one factorial times by four, oops, pardon me, times by five minus one factorial, which if we work this out, um, we should be able to do this without a calculator, will be equal to five. And we see that that is exactly the number we were looking for. It's a number that's in Pascal's triangle, first term of the fifth row. Now, there's one really important thing that we need to pay attention to. There's a question which comes up a lot in um, exam papers. It's usually only worth one mark, but it's really important to know because the answer is simple and we don't want to be missing out on easy marks like that. And that question is what are the number of terms in the expansion of a plus b to the power of n. Now we can see from our triangle that for example in the first row we're going to get two terms, in the second row we see we have three terms etc etc. So the answer to this question which comes up a lot for just one mark is n plus one. So make sure you have that noted down somewhere it can come in very useful. Okay, so having looked at the Pascal's triangle and having looked at a formula which will extract every term in the Pascal's triangle, let's write down a general formula for the expansion of a plus b to the power of n. So that formula is as follows. Remember, we said in the last slide that the kth term of the nth row is given by the formula n choose k and that that would be the coefficient of the a to the power of n minus k term and the b to the power of k term. So in this case here, we're talking decreasing powers of a in our expansion and increasing powers of b. But as I said before, it doesn't matter which way around we do this. We could have said b to the power of n minus k times a to the power of k, for example. So what does this um, give us then if we were to write this out explicitly? Let's again use our example a plus b cubed, which we know already the answer to, but we just want to prove that again using this new formula. Well, our n is equal to 3. Our first term, considering counting from 0, is going to um, give k is 0. So the first term is 3, choose 0, times a to the power of 3 minus 0, b to the power of 0, plus, well, the next term n is still 3. We're summing over k, so our next term of k is going to be equal to 1. a to the power of 3 minus 1, b to the power of 1, plus 3, choose 2, a to the power of 3 minus 2, b to the power of 2, plus 3, choose 3, a to the power of 3 minus 3, times b to the power of 3. Now if you were to work out all these combinatorics formulas, we should again be able to do this without our calculator, so maybe it's a good point to pause the video and have a little bit of practice with that. We should find that this is going to be equal to 1 times a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3a b squared plus 1 times b cubed. So again, we see that's the um, formula that we obtained from just reading the coefficients from Pascal's triangle on the slide before. Good. So now we're equipped to handle some slightly trickier questions. And we're going to have a look at an example um, that's quite typical of IB exam papers, whether it be higher level or standard level. And those questions look something like this. A lot of the time the IB asks, find the coefficient of the x to the m term in a given expansion. So for example, this might look like find the coefficient of the x to the 6 term in the expansion 2x minus 3 to the 9. Now, teachers um, use a lot of different methods to solve this, but I want to show you one method which I always use throughout the IB and which I teach all my students because I think it's a great method as it applies from the simplest examples to the a lot harder ones as well. So the first step in that method is just to tell the examiner what we're doing 
the ith term of the expansion is given by, and once we've told the examiner what we're going to write down, we write the ith term of the expansion. Now, remember the formula we saw on the last slide giving us the, all the terms in the expansion. If we look at that and we pick out one term, i.e. the ith term, we're going to get something that looks like n, choose i, a to the power of n minus i times b to the power of i. So that's very broadly the ith term in that expansion. Now, if we look at um, what we're trying to solve, we want to find the x to the sixth term in 2x minus 3 to the power of 9. So if we look at that, we can identify that in our case, the a that we're talking about is 2x, and the b that we're talking about is minus 3. Now remember, we before saw a plus b to the power of n, here we have a negative number as b, so we need to remember to include that negative sign in b, and our n here is 9, it's the power. So if we fill those values into the expression for our ith term, we should um, be able to see that this is going to equal 9, choose i, a, which we said is 2x, to the power of 9 minus i, times b, which we said was minus three to the power of i. So that is our i term. Now the second step in this method is to use our indices rules to group constant terms and x terms. Now, I'm just gonna remind you of an index rule which is gonna come in useful here. And that is if we have, for example, x times y to the power of n, we can expand those brackets by applying that power to each individual term in that bracket. So we can have x to the m, y to the m. So if we do that in our case here, we wanna group the constant terms and the x terms. Well, what do we mean by constant terms? Well, constant terms are the numbers which are gonna form our coefficients. So if we look at what we have currently for the ith term, well, this term right here, 9 choose i, there's not going to be an x coming anywhere out of that term. So that's going to form part of our co coefficient. It's a constant term. This 2x here, well, it contains a 2, which is going to form part of our coefficient. And we have an x there as well, which is obviously going to be our x term. And this, again, is going to be a constant term that's going to contribute to our coefficient. So our job here is to separate those constant terms and x terms. And we see that a lot of the work has already been done for us. There's not too many terms to split up. The only term we need to split up is that 2x to the power of 9 minus i. We want to separate that 2 and that x. So if we apply that index rule that um, I just noted in the top right, then we can say that this is equal to 2 to the power of 9 minus i. And now I'm going to take that minus 3 to the i term together with the constant terms and at the end have the x term, which is x to the power of 9 minus i from the expansion of that bracket. Good. The next step in this method is to then find the value of i for which the power of x will be m. So let's just think about what we've done here so far. We've got an expression for the i -th term in our expansion. And we want to find the x to the sixth term so we can find the coefficient. So what we have to do is to actually select the value of i or to find the value of i such that we're going to get the x to the sixth term. So we want the x to the sixth term. Therefore, if we look at our x term in terms of i, our x term in terms of i is x to the power of 9 minus i, which is equal. We want this to be equal to x to the six, that's what we're looking for, right? So therefore, because our bases are equal, we can set these powers equal to each other, such that nine minus i must equal six. And therefore from this, we find that the i term we're looking for is the i is equal to three term. So what that means is if we substitute this value of i back into our formula for the i term, then we should be able to get our coefficient of the x to the sixth term. So let's have a go at that. Looking at our expression for the i term right here, if we substitute in i is three, we're gonna get nine, choose three, two to the power of nine 
minus minus three minus three to the power of three and x to the power of nine minus three. So this would be a paper two question. So um, you could use your form, uh, your calculator to work this out. Um, and if we work out these coefficients right here, these terms are going to form our coefficients. We're going to get that this whole expression is equal to minus one, four, five, one, five, two times x to the power of six. So we found the coefficient of our x to the sixth term. When we've substituted in i is three, we get this coefficient of our x to the sixth term. So that is our answer right there. So just to recap one more time, what have we done? Well, we've written out in our first step an expression for the ith term in our expansion using that formula that I showed on the last slide. And then what we did is we manipulated that expression a little bit so we could separate um, the coefficients or the constants that would form our coefficient from the x term. Then look at that x term and see, okay, well, what value of i do we need such that we're going to get x to the sixth? We found that that was i is three. And therefore, when we plug that value back into our expression, we found the coefficient of our x to the sixth term. So for an example like this, this might seem slightly lengthy if you've learned a different method, but this is a really good method when you get to harder examples, um, just to have that consistency in your method. Now, one thing that's important to note here is, as I mentioned before, the coefficients of the binomial expansion are symmetric. So what that means is I could have also solved this problem in terms of increasing powers of A and decreasing powers of B. So we see here that we were working in decreasing powers of A and increasing powers of B. Now, as I said, because the coefficients are symmetric, what this means is that we could have also written the ith term as nine, choose I to the power of A, I, B to the N minus I. And if we worked through exactly the same steps, in our third step, we would have found that the value of i we're interested in is i is six, and we should have gotten to the same answer. So just to make you aware there, coefficients are symmetric, therefore it doesn't matter if we um, work this out in terms of increasing or decreasing powers of a. So that was it for our first video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back with more. But in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, have a look on our website or on our YouTube page for more videos in subjects such as economics, geography, psychology or ESS. I hope to see you again next time.